Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Some of you might know that old school reference. Hello, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are having a great day today. In my May wrap up video, I failed to mention that I was able to take a trip to Atlanta, Georgia for work. And it was a great opportunity. Anytime I get a chance to vacation, especially when it's on the company's dime or not my dime, I try to take as full advantage of it as I possibly can, checking out events, eating at great places. I respect the company's budget like I respect my own budget, but I, I really try to make it a full experience and enjoy it as much as I can. So I was able to work part of the day, go into Atlanta, get into my hotel, and then I set up to work a little bit longer, kind of catch up on things and close down for the day. Well, when I did this, I opened up my computer and I got this influx of emails and meeting invites that caused me a bit of anxiety right out the gate. I was there for something career related, but I started to think, am I prepared for this? Did I bring what I'm supposed to bring? Like I was already there and I honestly <laughs> was just like, oh my goodness, I don't feel prepared now. And I started to feel a little bit anxious and I reached out to my mom and friends and they were like, don't worry about it. You got it. It's cool. But I will be honest with you. I was just like, oh my goodness. Like, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Am I as prepared as I should be? And I was immediately thrown out of my comfort zone just by getting those updates. And even though I was consoled by my friends not to be anxious, it's okay. This article came across my vision at the right moment. And I wanted to share it with you. So I was checking into the hotel. You know how sometimes they have magazines out there for you to pick up. So I did pick up a couple. One of them was the USA Today. After I had shut down for the day and was getting prepared to go to dinner, I started to just kind of leaf through the newspapers. I came across an article by Ken Fisher, who is a columnist for the USA Today. And this article is from May 13th, 2019, and I wanna share it with you. The headline is Skip Comfort Zone, Women Advise. And so immediately I'm thinking, this is something I need, <laughs> something I need right now. So I went on reading it, and of course I wanna share it with you. Most of the time, anything that I read, I take it for the purpose that it's meant for. This one is meant for career tips but I always look at it for anything else I'm experiencing. So it could be career wise, it could be debt freedom journey wise, it could be relationships wise. And so for me, this made an impact on what I was dealing with for being in Atlanta for those couple days. But then it's also something that I can see relating to my debt free journey. Let me know in the comments which one of these pieces of advice, career tips, etc., speak to you. Have you recently stepped outside of your comfort zone? How did it make you feel? Like, did it go well or not so well? Let me know what you think of these tips as I'm going along. So here goes Ken Fisher writes. With the 10th anniversary of my mother's death approaching, this Mother's Day was wistful. She would have turned 100 in weeks. And he talks about his mom. He talks about her growing up in Southwest Arkansas, pre-Great Depression, before penicillin. He talks about her marrying his father during World War II, moving west and never looking back. Honoring her memory, I asked top women at my firm what advice they would give women seeking to fulfill their vision of life. So you know a little bit of the context. He's writing in memory of his mom, which I think is very special, and this was right around Mother's Day, and he's asking women at his firm for advice tips. So the first one is don't settle for comfortable. <laughs> and again, I'm thinking, okay, right now I'm not comfortable. So, okay, here we go. Jill Hitchcock, a 20 year veteran, I'm gonna skip around a little bit, offers this advice. Run toward the things that scare you, especially early in your career. Okay. Too often I see associates, especially women, seeking comfortable roles instead of what really challenges them to build new skills. She said, 
Don't close doors opting for comfortable or known roles that play to skills you have. Move toward roles that build skills you don't have. So did you hear that? Of course, stepping out of your comfort zone comes with risk. And you'll want to evaluate those risks. Like you don't want to go, you know, way too far out there, right? <laughs> like you don't want to leap or catapult outside of your comfort zone. It, I mean, in some cases, maybe you do. So my disclaimer is that you'll want to weigh the risk, but don't just settle for comfortable, she says. Again, challenge yourself. Challenge yourself to build new skills as opposed to getting a position or staying in a position that just plays to the skills you already have. Challenge yourself and I love that. Of course, you know, with my debt-free journey, there was one month where I had met all my goals like around the middle of the month and I asked you all, should I make some stretch goals? Should I make more goals for the rest of the month? And you know, I was sitting here like, you know, I've done pretty good here. Like I could probably take a little break. And, and some of you were like, stretch goals, make more goals. And a part of me was like, oh, I ought to. <laughs> but for the most part, I was just like, yeah, challenge yourself, do more, go further, go, go, go. And so I love that right off the bat, those challenges, taking on that risk is a step out of the comfort zone, but it helps to build new skills. And I love that. Carrie Ann Coffee, also 20 years at the firm, echoed this. Feeling role comfortable creates mediocrity and stagnation. She adds, be direct about your aims. Her favorite advice comes courtesy of her older brother. If you don't ask for it, some other jerk will. And that is the truth. That is the truth. So don't feel role comfortable. It creates mediocrity and stagnation. Some of us in our debt-free journeys have, you know, kind of had moments where we coasted along and that's okay. You know, it's okay at times to kind of get a break, hit a, uh, an intentional plateau, but then you don't want to get to the point where you're just like, you know, I'm coasting on my journey. Like, you know, keep it moving, keep it challenging. And I love this advice from her older brother, because if you don't ask for it, if you don't go for it, if you don't challenge yourself, somebody else is going to do it. They'll challenge themselves. And you're going to sit there and wonder like, why is it that they're in that position and I'm in, and I'm sitting here in this position. And it's because sometimes we get role comfortable and we don't, we don't ask for it. We don't go for it. Okay, so the next one is you can't have all the answers. My goodness. Take time to breathe and reflect, says Lauren Garrity. Don't expect to have all the answers early in your career. She says, I often see young adults seriously stressed thinking they need a long-term career roadmap. Life is unpredictable. You need to be flexible and resilient. So find out what you enjoy what challenges you, then learn from those experiences and build on them. Over time, with work and self-reflection, you should land in a good place. So you, I, I mean, I just, I love this one because you won't have all the answers. And sometimes it's going to be daunting to know what is this step what is that step way out there? Well, sometimes you're just going to have to take this next step and not know exactly what the future holds. Career-wise, budget-wise, debt-free journey-wise. And you know, I talked about this in my Just Keep Going video. There are times you're going to have to break things out into small chunks and say, okay, I'm going to handle this chunk right now because I don't have all the answers for all those other chunks. But for this one here, I'm going to do my best on this very next step. And then there, maybe the path will lighten and I'll know where to go from here and there and there. So, I mean, I love that. Life is unpredictable. You need to remain flexible and resilient. Some of us will be coasting along, doing well, then all of a sudden the refrigerator goes out. You got to remain flexible. You must remain resilient. In our debt-free journeys, we all have an end in sight, maybe even down to the date of exactly when we'll be debt-free, but something is going to happen that could cause it either to be earlier or later, and we must remain resilient. I love that. You're not going to have all the answers at one time. Lane Jarvis stressed avoiding burnout. Take care of your health. 
Don't prioritize work over taking care of yourself. It will make you better and healthier so you can work longer. Now that's something I think uh, several of us need to be reminded of. At the end of the day, you working super hard, working yourself to death, as they say, neglecting yourself or the health of your relationships or the health of your family or any of those things, etc. What will it all mean if you're not healthy, right? If you forsake taking care of yourself medically, emotionally, spiritually, all that stuff, to be debt free, to work a particular job, if you don't take care of yourself, what will it mean? Priorities, people. <laughs> you can't enjoy it if you're not well. If you're sick and you neglected yourself along the way to get to a certain point, think how much less you'll enjoy it when you get there. Take care of your health. The next one is always fund your 401k. Invest in yourself, Garrity says. Participate as much as you can in your 401k. Get invested in the market and stick with a basic plan. Don't get too cute with it. I like that. She also stressed simplicity. For longer term savings, save all you can and any amount you can and invest in stocks. Look up in 20 or 30 years from now and you'll be glad you did. She also says if you're going to marry, Marry someone who supports you personally and professionally. I wouldn't be where I am without my husband today. So I like this one, even though, you know, on Dave's plan, he talks about stopping investing until you're debt free. Some of us have done that. Some of us have not done that. But you invest in yourself nonetheless. Like she said, in 20 to 30 years, you'll look up and be so happy you did it. For those of you who are still investing in your 401k, you'll be happy in 20 to 30 years that you did it. Those of us who are not investing in our 401k until after we're debt free, after we're debt free and can put 15% into our retirement moving forward in 20 to 30 years, we'll be so happy. We did it. And so invest in yourself. I love that. Save money. And then I like that she talks about relationships. Now she talked in the form of marriage, but she talks about building a support system. Marry somebody who will support you. Now some of you are married, some of you aren't. And some of you aren't willing to be unmarried if a person doesn't support you personally and professionally. I would think that they probably do. But if they don't, he goes into something that says, create a supportive network. Some of us, our spouses are not gonna be on the same page with this debt-free journey. And you just have to find a way to communicate the importance of it to you and the importance of it to your boyfriend or girlfriend, your significant other, your parents, your friends, so that they can help support your dreams and you can move forward. If not, that might not be something that you can rely on and then you can create a supportive network, which is actually his next topic. It says, if you're gonna stay home to raise kids, understand you're taking on major personal risk if something happens to the primary breadwinner in your family, says Hitchcock. Make sure you have enough disability and life insurance to support you and your kids if the unexpected happens. It happens. And make sure you have a support network. This group can help you navigate through opportunities and setbacks. If you're home raising the kids, and then your significant other is out helping provide the funds, just be prepared for the risk that that provides. In every way possible, just financially support that endeavor. So just make sure your insurance policies are up to date and you have a really good understanding of what you're doing. If say your significant other is unable to work and bring income into the home. And so I like that because that's a really important thing sometimes we forget and don't highlight. And then of course, get yourself a supportive network. Try to get someone, it can be your significant other, your friends, siblings, parents, me, <laughs> other YouTubers who are going through this debt-free journey, other people in your career, your co-workers. Just give yourself a supportive network so that whenever opportunities come, you can rejoice with one another. You can have someone to hash it out with and do some decision-making around. If you experience setbacks, you have someone to talk to, maybe help gain perspective from, 
and all those things. When it comes to a debt-free journey, I know for me, building a support network was super important. When I first started working on becoming debt-free, I didn't immediately highlight a lot of people who were doing this, doing the same thing. I felt like I was kind of walking along in a group of individuals who were okay with debt and things like that. And I'm not downplaying them. That's where I was. That's normal. So I was kind of walking along in that. And then all of a sudden looked over and was just like, wow, it would be really nice to be debt free. I don't have to worry about paying interest. I don't have to feel like I'm bound. I'm going to go in that direction. And for a while you feel alone out there or you're out there with a lot of people all over the world who are following Dave Ramsey or working on becoming debt free. And you have to kind of create the supportive network to feel like you're heading in the right direction. I've asked questions in the Dave Ramsey chats and to some of my friends who then I ended up finding who are doing this and just got great revelation by finding people who were in the same boat as me. And so finding that creative network, either personally, in person, or virtually is gonna be super important. And he ends with this, finally, they agreed, your path is up to you and no one else. Go your own way. Maybe a bit like my mom did, just different. He circles back to this being done in memory of his mom. Each of the women he interviewed agreed, your path is up to you, no one else. There are some of you who are gonna say, oh no, I can't do that, I wouldn't do that, that couldn't be me. And then I may look at something you do and I'll be like, uh-uh, I wouldn't do that, that's not me, I wouldn't do that. Your path is your path and mine is mine no one else's go your own way we all have different circumstances we all may at one time in this life right now this one time have an end goal in mind and that's to become debt free or to get into a career that we find much more joy in but your path is your path never expect anyone to totally line up to what you're doing never expect that if they do that's awesome that's wonderful but if they don't, it's okay. This is your one and only life. No one else's. This is your path and no one else's. As you can tell, reading this, it made a huge difference. The support of my friends and family really helped to quiet that anxiety in me. But also reading this article because I feel like it was purposed for it to come through my hands at the time and it really spoke to me. So let me know in the comments what in this article spoke to you, what interpretation did you get from it, and what do you think about stepping outside of your comfort zone? Also let me know what you've done recently to step outside of your comfort zone. You never know how big your comfort zone can get until you step outside of it. And then you'll start to say, wow, I can do that. Your comfort zone grows, you step outside of that. It grows even further, you step outside of that, test the boundaries of your comfort zone and you'll be surprised at how much more amazing you are. See you next time.